This is QTV News. I am Answana Eswanyasi and thanks for joining us. Coming up, in the Islamic tradition of sharing and caring, the Saudi government has donated significant quantities of sacrificial meat to the Gambian government through the Islamic Development Bank for onward distribution to the poor and needy. An organization called Gambia for Five Years, Peace and Stability says they plan to march to remind the president to respect the constitution. The Gambian diaspora contributed over $300 million in remittances in 2019. A roundtable looks at ways of further enhancing that contribution to the nation's development. Stay tuned as we bring you more on this and other stories. And now the news in detail. The government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has donated 5,000 cartons of sacrificial meat to the government of the Gambia for onward distribution to the poor and needy. Alu Sisi witnessed the handing over ceremony at the seaports in Banjul and Hina reports. Falling on the 10th day of the holy month of Du al Hijjah, it is the festival sacrifice and coincides with the Hajj pilgrimage in Mecca. It honors Abraham's willingness to slay his son Ismail at Allah's request, a supreme act of faith. When Abraham was about to carry out the act on Mount Arafat, Angel Jibril appeared to prevent him from going through with it, saying he had already demonstrated his love for Allah. An animal was slaughtered instead. As Allah says in the Quran, it is not via meat, nor via blood that reaches Allah, it is via piety that reaches Allah. But it is also without doubt that the meat of the sacrificial animals will later reach millions of poor and needy families across the world. Today it is that meat that reaches the people of the Gambia donated through the Saudi project for utilization of hot meat. In handing over the meat, Ahmed Mohammed Rahimi, legal consultant and contract specialist for the Kingdom's project for utilization of hot meat, expressed delight at witnessing the event. From uh, Saudi government to Gambia to distribute this meat under needy people, and wish the God accept our uh, worship, and may God accept our uh, distribution of this meat. In receiving the donation on behalf of the government and people of the Gambia, Permanent Secretary One at the Office of the President, Pataja, said the donation is another demonstration of the cordial bilateral ties between the two countries. PSJ gave an assurance that the meat will reach the intended beneficiaries. The Gambia and Saudi Arabia have been long partners in development. You have been supporting this country in many ways, and today, this is another form of support that you are demonstrating here. On that note, through you, we are thanking the government and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and its people. Speaking Mandinka, Imam Lamin Ture, president of the Gambia Supreme Islamic Council, said the donation is now an annual event. He loaded the bilateral ties between Saudi and the Gambia while encouraging two governments to further strengthen relations. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. Gambia for five years peace and stability on Wednesday held a press conference to remind the president to respect the five years presidential mandate stipulated in the constitution. The event was used to update the public on their planned 12th January Solidarity March. Ajibin Dudrami reports. The organization emphasized that it is a non-partisan organization and that their main aim is for the president to respect the constitution as past presidents of the Gambia have done. Members disclosed that they plan to stage a solidarity march to advocate for peace and a non-violent political atmosphere in the Gambia. Ibrahim Osoriba, Secretary General of Gambia for five years, says they are expecting over 100,000 people, including people from the diaspora, to participate in the Solidarity March on the 12th of January from Sting Corner to Denton Bridge. He adds that the Gambia security is at stake if the situation from the three years Jotna is not treated amicably. There is zero tolerance for violence and chaos in this country, not even in the name of a coalition agreement that cannot possibly supersede the constitution of the Gambia. 
Seven months ago, an organization called Three Years Jotna decided to hold President Barrow to account to respect the promise he made as part of the coalition that brought him into office. The movement, which held its own march in December, has given an ultimatum for the president to step down on the 19th of this month. Ibrahim Asuri says that any action by the three years Jotna, especially the protests they plan later this month, is treason. He went on to say that the peace of the country will not be compromised. As opposed to the three-year campaign, however, let me also hasten to say that any attempt by Tears Jotna and their allies to take to the streets on the 28th as promised to us will be considered as a treason, a complete Coup d'etat is going to be completely treason us and it is going to be unacceptable for the Gambian people and our allies across the world. Abdullahi Mendi, propaganda secretary Gambia for five years, says a petition will be handed to the president on the day of the Solidarity March to remind him to respect his constitutional mandate entrenched in the constitution. We want him to respect the constitution of the Gambia and serve that five years. This would be in the petition and this is what Gambians really voted in for. We should all agree with all our different political ideas or political opinions, but the country should be respected. And when we talk about the country, we mean the constitution of the country. Mr. Mandy commended three years Jotna members for maintaining peace on the demonstration they recently conducted. He called it as a mature gesture for not putting the country's peace at stake. Ajibin to Drame, QTV News. Over $300 million in remittances was contributed by Gambians in the diaspora in 2019. The information was disclosed by the Deputy Director of the Foreign Operations Department of the Gambia Central Bank. Babu Garci tells us more. The Central Bank's Deputy Director made the remarks during the 12th Diaspora Finance Technical Roundtable meeting at the National Assembly. The event was organized by GK Partners, the Central Bank of the Gambia and the Ministry of Finance. The Diaspora sometimes referred to as the eighth region of the country, continued to play a significant role in the country's economic development. The third finance technical roundtable gathering is looking into options for issuance of diaspora bonds in the Gambia, informing policy, processes and practice to reduce remittance costs, among other matters. In his welcoming remark, the clerk of the National Assembly, Momodou Sise, highlighted the important role Gambians in the diaspora play in the country's development. Diaspora finance... Roundtable cannot have been more urgent and appropriate than now when diaspora violence, notably in the form of remittance, account for some 20% of our GDP. Suffice it to say, remittance inflow have increased significantly in recent years and have become the, more, the main financial external inflow. Surpasses all the inflows that traditionally play an important role in the economy. Professor Jibril Fall, director of GK Partners and MSDG Project, said the discussion seeks to involve the practitioners and financial institutions to work with the diaspora and the central bank to expand the financial input through remittances and investment. There are specific targets that is to meet the sustainable development goals of reducing the cost of remittances to not more than 3%. And in fact, in the Gambia, the Gambia diaspora strategy makes that target by 2021, not 2030. So it's a more ambitious target. A question one might ask is whether there have been any success registered since the initiative started. Professor Fall has a response. There has been movement. The biggest aim is that the cost of remittances to the Gambia should not be more than 3%. That's the target. And in the Gambia diaspora strategy, the target is this aim should be reached by 2021. 
since we started these discussions three years ago, there's been major improvements, particularly in corridors like United Kingdom remittances to the Gambia. So this year, we're focusing on the corridors where the cost of remittances are still too high. To add weight to the successes and importance of the diaspora's involvement in the country's economic development, Karafa Jobate of the Central Bank said there has been a significant increment in remittances sent into the country compared to 2018. The Gambian diaspora have remitted uh, $277 million in 2018 to the Gambia and in 2019 we are already above $300 million. I mean uh, the final uh, figure will be announced by the Honorable Governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia in the mayor meeting on the 18th of this month. Mr. Jobate further states that the central bank, in collaboration with the money transfer operators and the African Institute of Remittances, are working closely to see how best they can engage the remittance service providers to reduce remittance transfer costs. The Gambia diaspora contributes 20% of the country's GDP, thus engaging the financial institution to reduce transaction costs to 3% or less by 2021, and providing a diaspora bond among other measures, is expected to significantly increase remittances into the country. Babu Karsi, QTV News. And from that report by Babu Karsi, we take a short commercial break. But when we return, the Association of Sipharders Samaji have briefed the media on their work and objectives and preparations ahead of a trade fair in Dakar. And we learn of a young Gambian footballer who may have signed the contract that will finally allow him to fulfill his enormous potential. Join us after the break for these stories and more. at it again with its brand new free mobile app. Oh yes! Now you can access the wonderful world of QCell with the new app and get all your favorite services on the app. There's no need to remember any codes. Fantastic! No more codes. And even better, with the new app you can live stream QTV and listen to Q Radio on your phone anywhere, anytime. Yes, listen to Q Radio Live, purchase your Q Power tokens, use your Q Money wallet, and do much more all for free on the app. Go now and download the app for free from Play Store or the App Store. And you can get 30 days free QTV streaming once you download the app. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that's because it's QCell, the network you trust for great things. QCell, a decade of innovation. A lifetime of trust. Welcome back. The Association of Sip Herders, Samaji, on Thursday held a media briefing on their work and objectives and preparations for the upcoming international trade fair to be held in Dakar later this month. The story is by me and read by Malik Nyang. Samaji, which has a membership of over 200 registered livestock breeders, was established in 2016 by a group of Gambian farmers and entrepreneurs to make livestock products such as meat affordable for ordinary Gambians. And in doing so, complementing government's efforts in attaining food self-sufficiency targets. Babukar Jeng, Secretary General of the Association, says their prime objective is to cut down on the importation of livestock products, especially during the festive period. Due to evolve involvement of uh, the livestock industry in West Africa, it has led to the formation of different actors and players and associations in the Gambia who are working together to achieve certain objectives. I think primarily to support Gambia's food self-sufficiency in meat and uh, meat products. Let Gambia and Gambians know that uh, their sons and daughters are into livestock and then we work in tireless to make sure that one day Gambia will not import meat or meat products. The president of the association, Aliulo, called for more support from central government. 
He adds that the invitation to take part in the upcoming trade fair in Dakar by their Senegalese counterparts shows that the association's work is being recognized beyond the Gambia. We have been invited to participate in the biannual 13 International Livestock Show and Championship organized by Senegal's National Livestock Association, ADAM, which is to be held in Dakar from the 17th to the 27th of January 2020. The ADAM Trade Fair is graced by international and regional livestock enthusiasts, and Gambia is to be represented for the first time. And to make sure that Gambia make a mark at the event, Samagi Association, Gamship Breeders and Professional Breeders Association have put their efforts together. Ibrahim Jalo, president of Gambia Sheep Breeders Association, says they are confronted with many challenges. He revealed that government is yet to offer any support to the association and also called on young people to venture into commercial livestock breeding. At the level of the association, we met OJ when he was a minister. We met Minister Diva when he was a minister. We met Ami Fabre as a minister. So far, the government hasn't done anything for the association. Everything we're doing is done by ourselves. To say that I'm um, working with those people, we don't know much about it. What we know, everybody here is individual. Personally, I'm a full-time farmer. That's what I do. I'm a full-time farmer. And i got so many members in the association who are full-time farmers. And our main objective is to make sheep meat in this country very cheap. Other speakers included Ali Ubaji, a member of the Gambia Breeders Association, and Samaji members Alaji Jao and Nafilo. Malik Nyang for QTV News. The first edition of the Gambia Food Festival has ended at the QCD complex in Bijilo, where vendors displayed a wide-ranging variety of local and international cuisine. Bindu Koka tells us more. The food festival was meant to be the biggest food festival in Gambia, even though, according to sources, some of the vendors expected to take part failed to show up. Emmanuel Agumpopo, coordinator of the Gambia Food Festival, speaks about the challenges they face during the event. We think it's actually miscommunication um, for the first day because it was supposed to be a day before yesterday and yesterday. But we had some problems actually um, beyond our um, uh, doubt actually. We thought that we wouldn't have problems but in the end we actually had problems. But we've solved those problems and with that as well we have people that are actually coming to actually support us as well. So now everything is actually going smooth. We had a lot of people come out yesterday to actually come and support us and we want today to be the same thing actually. Mr. Agun Popo adds that the Gambia Food Festival is here to stay as an annual event and that for future editions, people will be invited within and outside the country. For the people that actually fail to come, we understand that, look, it's the first time and they want to see how this one goes um, so they can invest in the first one. But we are youth, actually. They should understand that we, we didn't have any money in our pocket and they should have supported us. And with the success of this as well, we are sure that a lot of people are actually regretting not supporting us because yesterday was very big. We thought if we cancelled, um, it wouldn't be as, as good as we, are, um, we were expecting. But we were overwhelmed with the people that actually came here. Hadi Juve, CEO of Fresh Juice Gambia encourages the organizers to continue with such events, saying it is good for young entrepreneurs to showcase their cuisine. To continue this, this, this type of event because it is very imp important for the, for, the, for the income of the country because, uh, you know, the sector of tourism are very important uh, to develop this sector. And this, this sort of event permit uh, to the entrepreneur to, to watch their, their capacity and to, to watch uh, um, their product, yes. Binta Jala, a vendor at the festival, shared a different view and also made some suggestions and recommendations to the organizers. They have tried, but they need to do more about the advertisement, maybe. There are so many people that don't know that the food festival is on, yeah. And then next time they should make it during the weekend. Yeah. Bintu Koka, QTV News. Gambian midfielder Suleiman Mare has signed a three-year deal with Belgian top-tier side Ghent. The Scorpions defensive midfielder has been a footballing nomad, having had spells with clubs in Spain and Belgium. Our sports reporter Mamoudi Kajaka has been monitoring his progress and he now reports. 
The 23-year-old has signed an agreement that will keep him at the club until 2023. Once thought of as the next big thing for Gambian football, Suleiman Mar hasn't quite reached the promised land yet. He played for Spanish sides Granada, Almeria, Real Valladolid over a three-year period, often in the reserves before moving to Belgium to play first for Open. Perhaps this latest move is his moment to shine. Uh, it's a big club. Um, I have so many friends who have been there before, so they said good things about Ghent, like um, can um, get improvement here and. Uh, I believe like uh, I can reach higher heights here. Yeah. Uh, I think um, last season was great. Um, in Open I had so many great uh, moments like um, the club, they helped me a lot. The coach, the players, so I uh, you only have to say a big thank you to them. And now today I am very happy, like excited to join Ghent. It's a great club and I hope like uh, we can uh, have a great success. Premier League side Watford signed Mar in 2017, but he was loaned to Valladolid before moving to Open, where he played the entire 2019 season. He played 30 games for the Pandas last season, scoring a goal and providing two assists. This season, he played in 11 games for them. Yeah, always there is a personal ambition here, like um, to be better, like uh, to improve and um, help the teammates, like uh, to work with the club and uh, restore the confidence the club have in me on the pitch. First I rest, when I'm up I try to play PlayStation with friends online and if I can I go out like eat, do small shopping and that's it. Mar first played for a local club Samga, now in the Gambia second division. He also played 13 times for the Gambia national team, making his debut in 2011 in a friendly against Guinea-Bissau. Mar got his competitive debut for the Scorpions in a 4-1 away defeat to Algeria in 2012. Since then, he has been inconsistent, with injuries mainly to blame for his lack of progress to bigger clubs. Recently, he played a big part in Gambia's first away win in a competitive game over three decades, scoring in a 3-1 win against Angola in October 2019. The Gans sporting manager Peter Verberg says Suleiman is someone they have been following for a very long time. Under open coach Claude Makalele, Mar was said to have played at a very high level last season and the club expects he will be able to fully develop that potential at Ghent. Mamudu Gajaga, QTV News. And before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main headlines. In the Islamic tradition of sharing and caring, the Saudi government has donated significant quantities of sacrificial meat to the Gambian government through the Islamic Development Bank for onward distribution to the poor and needy. An organization called Gambia for Five Years Peace and Stability says they plan to march to remind the president to respect the constitution. The Gambian diaspora contributed over $300 million in remittances in 2019. A roundtable looked at ways of further enhancing that contribution to the nation's development. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Thanks for watching. On behalf of the entire production team, join us tomorrow for more news.